Welcome to Quality Improvement, Decision Support for Quality Improvement. This is Lecture A. This unit is designed to provide information on clinical decision support as it is used to enhance patient care, quality, and safety. The objectives for Decision Support for Quality Improvement are to define decision support, its importance, and why it is difficult to implement. Compare decision support tools that help improve quality. According to Healthcare Information and Management System Society, HIMSS, quote, clinical decision support is a process for enhancing health-related decisions and actions with pertinent, organized, clinical knowledge and patient information to improve health and healthcare delivery. Information recipients can include patients, clinicians, and others involved in patient care delivery. Information delivered can include general clinical knowledge and guidance, intelligently processed patient data, or a mixture of both. And information delivery formats can be drawn from a rich palette of options that includes data and order entry facilitators, filtered data displays, reference information, alerts, and others. End quote. Clinical Decision Support Systems, CDSS, are typically designed to integrate a medical knowledge base, patient data, and an inference engine to generate care-specific advice. These systems are designed to help healthcare providers make decisions at the point of care. This unit will present examples of Clinical Decision Support, CDS, and more complex decision support systems. CDS can occur without a complex system to support it and should be pervasive in HIT systems. It is also important to consider that CDS systems are support tools and must be surrounded by a strategy and an overall aim. Whether you choose CDS or CDSS, they will be of no use unless you have an overarching goal for their implementation. Here are some examples of how the CDS can improve the care of patients. Hospital example. A physician is writing an order for an antibiotic that has to be dosed depending on the kidney function. When he adds the antibiotic at its full dose, the computer will prompt him to reconsider the dose based on the latest creatinine, a blood test of kidney function, and pulls up a dose calculator. Primary care example. A medical assistant is rooming a patient and reviews a reminder that informs her that the patient is due for a pap and a mammogram. She tells the patient and they decide she would like to have it today. By the time the clinician walks in, the patient is undressed and ready for the pap. The mammogram order papers are ready and the patient has been informed about how to perform her breast self-exam. As you can see, CDS systems are important tools for increasing the safety and efficiency of the healthcare system. The CDS Five Rights model states that we can achieve CDS supported improvements in desired healthcare outcomes if we communicate following these five premises. The information has to be evidence based, pertinent, and actionable. There is no point to adding information if you cannot do anything about it. There is a tendency to have the clinician be the recipient of all information. As teams organize around the patient-centered care model, one should consider which member of the team is the appropriate recipient. CDS can be administered in many different formats. Consider the use of alerts, order sets, or reference information as different CDS formats. Each has a role in the development of an institutional strategy. The delivery channel is also an important component of the CDS design. A delivery model example could include a PHR, personal health record, a mobile device, an EHR, electronic health record, or a more general channel such as the internet. The final component of a sound CDS strategy is the time when the information is delivered. When are the decisions made and when are actions taken? There are a number of CDS systems including relevant data displays, smart documentation forms, order facilitators such as smart order sets, consequence and modifiers, 
extended time guidelines and protocols, targeted reference, such as contextually relevant medical references or information buttons, reactive alerts, and so on. Other CDS systems include task assistance for tasks such as drug dosing and acknowledging laboratory results, diagnostic suggestions, patient summaries for handoffs between clinicians, procedure refreshers, training, and reminders, performance dashboards with prompts for areas needing attention, and tracking and management systems that facilitate task prioritization and whole service management. Let's review some of the research that supports the effectiveness of CDSS. Cooperman and his research team report that clinical decision support systems, when combined with CPOE, have the potential to improve medication safety and reduce medication-related expenditures. In addition to the obvious benefits of increasing legibility of orders, these systems introduce automation at the time the prescriber places an order. Decision support can also assist to ensure the safety of the order as well as compliance with clinical practice guidelines. An example is provided by Seidling and colleagues who developed a comprehensive algorithm that pulled relevant patient data, such as age and renal function, and adjusted upper dose limits for the patient characteristics. They have been able to decrease prescription of excessive medication doses using this type of decision support. Despite the potential usefulness of decision support systems, there is concern over the lack of widespread clinical acceptance by clinicians. In the early development of clinical decision support systems, there were three basic assumptions, which strongly influenced the development of these systems. These assumptions have been challenged and are now seen as myths. The first myth is that diagnosis is the dominant decision-making issue in medicine. In reality, clinicians usually ask, what can I do for this patient, rather than, what does this patient have? The second myth is that clinicians will use knowledge-based systems if the programs can be shown to function at the level of experts. We know that there is significant variation in practice, even among experts. The final myth is that clinicians will use standalone decision support tools. We know now that we need to integrate decision support into the context of routine clinical workflow. Four key functions of electronic clinical decision support systems have been identified. These include administrative, managing clinical complexity and details, cost control, and decision support. Decision support has the potential to be helpful to support clinical coding. In addition to assisting with the authorization of procedures and referrals, Decision support can assist in selection of appropriate diagnostic codes for billing purposes. Coding accuracy, that is, the extent to which the code accurately reflects the underlying patient's disease, directly affects the quality of billing decisions. The quote on the slide from Peters illustrates this point. Since coding is based on clinical documentation, with the advent of electronic health records, Administrators are looking for opportunities to capture accurate billing information from the data documented by clinicians, especially documentation of coded problem lists and data contained in history and progress notes. Other researchers are investigating the use of decision support tools that employ algorithms based on clinical data in the EHR to display a proposed list of coded diagnoses to guide prescribers to make the most appropriate selections. Decision support is used to manage the complexity of the clinical environment, especially in academic medical centers. Academic medical centers have a combined clinical and research mission and very complex business operations. With respect to clinical research, alerts can be established to assist with the recruitment efforts of clinical researchers by identifying eligible research participants based on inclusion and exclusion criteria. Clinical decision support is also used to manage follow-up of multiple referrals and tracking of orders. Clinical guidelines and outcomes related to preventive care and treatment of patients with chronic disease is another area in which investigators are studying the effectiveness of clinical decision support. 
Decision support can be used to help control the costs of care. By monitoring prescribing practices with respect to high-cost medication orders, alerts can be generated to suggest lower-cost alternatives. When institutions place restrictions on prescribing high-cost drugs, decision rules can ensure that indications for use are present. Duplicate or unnecessary laboratory and radiologic testing can be avoided by applying decision rules that warn the prescriber that the test has already been ordered, or that the test is inappropriate for the particular patient. General decision support functions promote the use of best practices and facilitate evidence-based population management. For example, Rules-based logic can scan available patient information and flag patients who are not in compliance with wellness or disease management regimens and alert the provider or the patient that interventions are due. Formulas and algorithms can present relevant patient data and perform complex calculations that the providers used to have to perform by hand. Important patient information can be tracked in disease registries. For example, Diabetes disease registries may include pertinent laboratory tests, dates of last foot and eye exams, and due dates for next services. Summary screens, usually the first to appear when the electronic record is opened, display patient problems, medications, recent laboratory test results, and other pertinent clinical information in a patient-at-a-glance display. These summary screens serve as reminders for the patient's care team about chronic issues to factor into decisions, as well as for covering providers who may have gaps in knowledge about the patient. Clinical situations can also be addressed as pre-assembled order sets for typical clinical scenarios. For example, annual physical examinations for females over age 45 may aid the provider to order the appropriate preventive tests as needed. Researchers have looked at unintended consequences related to clinical decision support. These consequences can be categorized into consequences related to content and presentation. There are three themes related to content. The first is elimination or changing of roles of clinicians and staff, especially clerical staff. For example, one case study noted that clinicians underestimated the gatekeeper function of the clerical staff, who, in the paper world, questioned daily x-ray orders after a certain amount of time. But once they automated this function, chest x-ray orders went on ad infinitum. A second unintended consequence related to currency of clinical decision support content. For example, changes in coding for billing or compliance and difficulties updating order sets may cause problems. Another content-related consequence is wrong or misleading clinical decision support content. An example of this would be a clinical decision support rule that leads clinicians to order something that is not adequately stocked. Another example is when contradictory advice is offered by two separate clinical decision support rules. The second category of unintended consequences is presentation. This category includes rigidity of systems, alert fatigue, and other sources of potential error. For example, the way in which workflow is changed by the insertion of the computer into the clinical workspace represents a presentation consequence. Alert fatigue is so great a problem that there is an entire unit devoted to that issue. Other sources of potential error include such things as the autocomplete feature that may insert the wrong medication or alerts that are seen when it is too late for action. This concludes Lecture A of Decision Support for Quality Improvement. In summary, clinical decision support systems are usually designed to integrate a medical knowledge base, patient data, and an inference engine to generate care-specific advice. Despite the potential usefulness of clinical decision support, its use has not led to widespread adoption. In planning to implement clinical decision support, IT professionals need to know that it will be used by clinicians and that its use will alter clinical decision-making, change behaviors, and improve patient outcomes. Four key functions of clinical decision support are administrative, managing clinical complexity and details, cost control, 
and decision support.